Hey everyone, in today's DMZ video, I've got an updated solo guide for Season 3. Queuing up solo has become increasingly more popular as players have gotten comfortable with the game mode and less interested in having teammates playing inside their washing machine. Season 3 has brought huge changes to the DMZ experience, many of which have dramatically benefited solo players. For me personally, I've always just enjoyed the extra challenge that playing solo provides, that glorious feeling of completing a very difficult mission, and wiping enemy squads is all the more exciting. In this guide, I'll go over everything I focus on as a solo player, especially methods for gearing up quickly in Almazra and Ashika Island, so you can get back in the fight quickly. Also, before we dive into the guide, I did start a hardcore Season 3 solo playthrough where I complete all of the missions solo on a free-to-play account, all without using any insured guns. So if you're looking for more long-form content, I'll have links in the description below for you to follow the journey on that one. Okay, so let's dive into this. Starting with the big change in Season 3, which is the bartering system and new play carriers and backpacks. These new systems allow players to barter specific items on the map for upgraded gear. Now, I've already done an overview of all the new changes in a previous video, so I'll have that linked in the description below as well. But when it comes to the new gear, if I'm playing Almazra or Ashika Island, I gravitate towards the comms vest and the secure backpack with a backup comms vest and secure backpack in the bag. So when I die, I instantly am re-kitted with the same exact loadout. I know, it's pretty crazy. The new secure bag is nuts. The comms vest is perhaps the most important new item for solo players, as it gives an announcer audio alert saying enemy operators are in the area when you are within 100 meters of an enemy team. This audio alert is huge for survivability and gives you the opportunity to make more informed decisions on your next move. Are you going to push forward and fight, or are you going to back off and let the area cool down? Now at least you know what your options are. Let's talk about how to quickly get your hands on this coveted comms vest. The recipe is two batteries, two hard drives, and one soothing hand cream. And I'll have a link in the description below for this cheat sheet. It is pretty handy to have around. These items are most easily acquired on Almazra, and my favorite method is hitting up gas stations. With Season 3, all loot across every area in DMZ has been buffed up, and now gas stations can have all of these items that we're looking for. So there is one gas station that looks like this, with the circular covering over the gas area, and that's the best one because of how many items and shelves there are in it. Followed up by this gas station, which has a circular overhang above the main entrance. All other gas stations are not as good. So learn the locations of these ones so you can quickly get your hands on the items you need. Now, if you don't see any hard drives, for example, then just hit up any police station or bank across the map and you'll have them in no time. My next favorite new item is the secure backpack. This is only a five slot backpack, but if you die, any items in it will remain in your inventory and the backpack will disappear. This is why I love to have a backup secure backpack and comms vest inside of my secure bag because when I die, I will instantly have that rekit ready to go for my next run. The secure backpack requires a golden skull, a gas can, and an electric drill. Once again, finding these items is easier and more consistent on Almazra in my opinion. The gold skulls now have a 100% drop rate off of the juggernaut and the new boss, the scavenger, as well as the usual methods like the commander helo crate and the golden supply crates remain good methods for finding gold skulls as well. But I just love going right for the jug. On Almazra, when I'm looking for a gold skull, his locations are identical to season two. So Alsharim Pass, up the zip line, hydroelectric on the center island and observatory in the large center dome. He will still DDoS you, so make sure you keep enough distance not to get DDoS, but you can still get that on-screen alert for his presence. Once you have the gold skull, the gas can and the drill are easy, and once again, I hit the same gas stations as I do for the comms vest. Now, if for some reason you can't find any drills at the gas stations, you just need to go check out the quarry. There are a bunch of warehouses over there that are going to have a drill for you as well. So those are my two favorite new items in Season 3, but I will give an honorable mention to the Stealth Vest. While I will always run around in a comms vest, sometimes I do like to have the Stealth Vest as a backup vest in my secure backpack for the ability to vest swap. When I hear an enemy UAV go up, I can just flip-flop vests, and boom, now I'm covered against enemy UAVs. Just don't forget to switch back to your comms vest after the UAV has expired, which I have done sometimes, and then I kind of die unnecessarily. The tempered vest is also really nice 
if you can get your hands on it it is great in building 21 and definitely my go-to vest in there tempered can only be crafted on shika island so keep that in mind and lastly the medical vest you know while handy in groups and if you're running a three-man surely but as a solo player the medical vest upside is not quite as good as the other three so that covers part of the loadout but now let's dive into the weapons once again after getting a nerf at the start of the season i still lean towards the iso hemlock as my go-to weapon it still seems like the most versatile gun for all distances compared to the others however there is a gun that i really like at close range and it's comparable at medium range and that is a Cronin Squall. This gun absolutely shreds at close range. I highly encourage you to get your hands on it by unlocking it through the Battle Pass and giving it a try. I'll have a link in the description for all of my gun builds if you'd like to check them out. Also, keep in mind that these guns may get adjusted for Season 3 mid-season update, so keep an eye out for upcoming changes. Now, while we're on the subject of weapons, Season 3 has a free-kitted TAC-56 and SPX Sniper for free at high rise at the start of every raid these two guns are there as part of a mission and no one ever takes them every single time i have ever gone there they're there the attack 56 is kitted nicely although it did get a nerf to headshot damage it's still a very very solid gun and for free you're gonna like it and the spx build is more of like a quick ads high velocity build really built for inside of 200 meters but to be honest i've been love sniping with it even though it's not a meta build so if you're down bad or you just need a free sniper which i do all the time just go grab that sniper and fill your secondary slot at high rise okay so let's get into my favorite ways of getting kitted on both main maps starting with ashika island i have a video up on the channel already that goes over a great method of getting a basic three vest in around five minutes and the quick gist of it is go into the waterways underneath the island. I'll link that video in the description below as well. It still remains a great way to get a three vest. You can get one in the very first box you open and you could get a, th a three vest in less than a minute. With season three though, we have another great method to get juiced up and that is looting all the strongholds in port. The port has a stronghold for every building now with all orange crates inside, easy items and easy money. There's also a new ship in the port with free crates all over it. There's no player spawn here anymore, so keep that in mind, but the level of AI presence is definitely higher, so be careful. Ashika Island remains one of the best ways to get kitted, but it's typically more dangerous than Almazra and not quite as easy to get the new unique armor vest and secure backpack which leads us to Almazra when I spawn in Almazra my first order of business is always to try and grab a helicopter no matter what I'm doing no matter how far away it is having the helicopter makes every single thing that you're doing in Almazra easier so I always try and go for it if I don't get it no big deal but it'll always be the number one priority when spawning in now some people aren't comfortable flying the helicopter but that's all the more reason for you to get it and practice quite simply the best way to get better is is to keep on flying and always try to keep it from getting disabled use gas stations effectively land in safe areas away from high ai density and you'll slowly learn to be a good pilot conveniently gas stations are also our primary source for materials for the comms vest and secure bag as well so you're going to be hitting those gas stations constantly as a helicopter pilot so you're going to be naturally getting yourself in position to gear up with a comms vest and a secure bag a little tip when grabbing the helo at actar village jumping from the cliff side of a observatory and landing directly on it allows you to quickly grab the helo and bypass killing any ai this is a huge deal because Akdar village is extremely hostile and you can definitely die there very easily as a solo player and there's like five helo spawns in Akdar village so being able to get to those ones on the roof quickly without any ai aggro is huge so now, what are the premium looting spots on Almazar? Well, many remain the same from the previous seasons like Airport Terminal, underneath Rohan Oil, Hafid Port Ship. But now we have Smuggler's Cave, which is east of Hydroelectric. This place is a stronghold, so you need a key. But if there is a raid weapon stash contract nearby, you can grab that and gain free access to the underground area. Along with whatever's in the weapon stash, you'll have access to all the orange crates down there as well. Like I said earlier, loot has been increased everywhere. So now more than ever, police stations and hospitals are great places to kit up as well with the medical supplies and vests and so forth. Also, the destroy supply missions and the subsequent safe locations continue to be a great source for making money. Another new item for Season 3 that I want to talk about is the Skeleton Key. This key allows you to unlock any door on any map. And as a solo player doing missions, for example, you're going to be needing keys and that skeleton key really just makes life so much easier. The craft for the skeleton key at the buy station on Almazra is a one GPU cost, 
The craft on Ashika Island is two gold bars and five thumb drives. And in building 21, it's three encrypted hard drives. Any of these maps will work pretty well. I personally just look for GPUs as my preferred method. With season three, the locked crypto room in Sawa Village is now accessible through the window. So there's a pretty solid chance of finding a GPU in there. Or you can sneak into the castle on Ashika Island and hit the three locked weapons lockers. These lockers have a around a 30% chance of dropping a GPU. So, but of course you will need to be wearing that secure backpack so you can transfer the GPU to Almazra in the next raid. Building 21 is also quite easy to find encrypted hard drives, but the overall chances of dying are obviously a little bit higher in Building 21. So it's really a pick your poison on how you want to farm for skeleton keys. But you do want to lock in a method for yourself that's consistent so that you can continue to have these skeleton keys at your disposal. So this gives a good sense of how to gear up, but what good is it if you're gonna die trying to exile? Well, thankfully, Season 3 has introduced the Private Exfil, which costs 50000 and gives you a much safer means of getting out alive. Also, I highly recommend you get comfortable landing on the back wing of the Exfil Hilo, because many times it's the safest way for you to leave, especially if there's already a team in the helicopter. Simply align yourself above the back right wing and land as close to the tail as you can. If you come in too steep from the front side, you can still get hit by the blade, so be careful. But once again, when you get comfortable with this method, there's no better way of getting out and you need to start practicing this if you're not comfortable because it is a vital skill for evacuating safely. So that's it for my solo tips for season three. I really hope this helped you out and you get more comfortable being a solo player. Let me know in the comments below how your solo experience has been so far in season three and your, just your overall thoughts on season three as well. Thank you so much for watching as always and don't forget to drop a sub for more DMZ content and I'll catch you in the next one.